job, Joanna. You too, Benji. Thanks for volunteering with me here. Hi, guys. Ready to go home? Sure, Radia. I guess we have done all that we can to help clean up our planet today. I just hope we can do more. Mother Earth needs more cleaning up like this now and in the future. With climate change making our environment more extreme by the day, cleaning up beaches is but a small feat compared to all that needs to be done. You're right, Joanna. Our planet truly needs all the help it can get to mitigate the effects of climate change. Tell us, Radia, how does nuclear science and technology help our planet? Your generation, as well as those that will come after yours, will be faced with a great challenge of solving the environmental issues brought about by climate change. Indeed, nuclear science and technology has applications that may help solve some of these issues and problems. In studies involving air pollution, X-ray fluorescent spectrometry, or XRF, can measure elements in small particles in the atmosphere. The vast database generated by XRF can then be put in a statistical model like a positive matrix factorization, or PMF, that can determine the different sources of air pollution and their respective contributions. For instance, in a study in 2011, using this analytical technique, XRF measurements showed a high concentration of lead in air collected in an area over a city in Metro Manila. We know that lead is an environmental toxin which can cause adverse neurological and cardiovascular effect in the human body when inhaled. Previously, its most prominent source are emissions from vehicles using leaded gasoline. This kind of information helps environmental managers and policymakers focus on the most significant sources of air pollution in the area. Leaded gasoline is already phased out in the Philippines since 2001. Policies that ban leaded gasoline are backed by science and extensive research. This ensures the public that the future doesn't have to be bleak and that clear blue skies are possible for Metro Manila. I wonder how other cities adopt measures to lessen air pollution. Let's cross our fingers and hope more innovations and smart policies are implemented to more cities around the world. One way that nuclear technology can help lessen this problem is if more countries can shift to using nuclear power plants. Nuclear power plants operate at over 93% capacity, which is way more efficient than any other type of power plant and nuclear reactors do not produce direct carbon dioxide emissions. Nuclear reactors do not produce air pollution or carbon dioxide while operating. It is important to understand the natural processes of the earth and the environment, such as ocean and groundwater movements, which are part of a complex water cycle, which affects the quality of water that we use as well as our access to it. Is it because all of the water in our planet is interconnected? Even the water coming from our taps? Yes, they are all part of one giant system. Nuclear analytical techniques are used to help us better understand our precious water resources. Hydrology is a scientific study of the properties of Earth's surface water, especially its movement in relation to land. Isotope hydrology helps scientists and environmentalists to better understand the movement and recharge of groundwater, ultimately leading to better management of mankind's freshwater resources. Stable isotopes of water can be measured using an isotope ratio mass spectrometer to trace the movement of water, particularly to trace contamination sources to understand how much groundwater we have, and then provide these information to the farmers, policymakers, and other interested stakeholders. Imagine being able to detect a drop of wine in Manila Bay. How cool is that? 
One of the major challenges in the Philippines is marine and coastal pollution. We have dealt with countless cases of algal bloom, or more commonly known as red tide, caused by unusual abundance of nutrients in water, often brought about by pollutants. This can be fatal to marine life, greatly affecting one of the country's major food sources. You mean by cleaning beaches and waterways like how we did today? We are also preventing red tide and helping the marine life as well as the people who depend on it for food? Yes, of course. Fortunately, the Philippines is also a pioneer in using nuclear techniques to study algal blooms. The Philippine Nuclear Research Institute developed the nuclear techniques to determine the dates of sediments and sedimentation rates in Manila Bay and elsewhere. This information helps us in determining sources of pollution and lessening them in order to avoid algal bloom in the future. Wow! Lessening pollutants in bodies of water has great benefits. We should do this regularly and take cues from science how to better clean our waterways. Let me tell you about another nuclear science and technology application that helps us in understanding the past, present, as well as the future. Cool! cool. Materials, both living and non-living, naturally incorporate radioactive substances under certain conditions. For example, radioactive carbon-14 is continuously incorporated into bodies of living organisms while these are living, but this incorporation process stops upon death. Radiometric dating using 14C is more commonly known as radiocarbon dating or carbon-14 dating. Radiometric dating can also be used to determine the timing of past environmental events. Take for example, the research done in Lake Sugetsu, an extraordinary lake with perfectly preserved bottom sediments, which record the history of the past 50,000 years. The lake sediment features distinct layers representing each of the four seasons of every year that has passed. Using this record as basis, we can know the approximate dates when environmental events like earthquakes and volcanic eruptions happened in the past. We can therefore reconstruct the environmental history of different areas through the help of radiometric dating. This helps us prepare for similar events that might happen now or in the future like the previous movements of the West Valley Fault Line, prompting schools and institutions to conduct earthquake drills so people would know what to do in case that happens again. Radiocarbon dating, however, is more popularly used for specimens like these. In archaeology, it is used to determine the age of fossils and other artifacts. Are Filipino scientists and archaeologists able to utilize this technology here in the Philippines? Yes. In fact, in 2019, a new species of ancient humans, the Homo luzonensis, was found in Callao Cave, Cagayan, Philippines. A team of researchers led by Professor Armand Mijares of the Archaeological Studies Program of the University of the Philippines de Liman made this landmark discovery. This finding changed the current understanding of human ancestry. And by understanding your ancestry, our past, we gain better understanding of ourselves for the present and our future in terms of how we evolve biologically, culturally, and socially. Correct, Joanna. Plus, this discovery in Cagayan also sets the Philippines as an essential part of history of human evolution. The fossils were determined to be around 67,000 years old using uranium series radiometric dating. These are some of the many ways nuclear science and technology is applied into fields that help us understand the environment and our historical past better, making it possible to recognize, prevent, and solve environmental challenges that we are facing now and in the future.